as you peruse those. We're going to head back down to Barclay Center and welcome back in our Ryan Rucco and Sarah Kustak. Well, thanks a lot, Chris. Sarah, we talked about this a little bit at the end of the game. You know, the Nets have played incredibly well against the top teams in the NBA. And tonight, they also did not have their best player on both ends of the floor, Kevin Durant. But they have talked a lot about needing better desire on the defensive end. We heard Steve Nash say that before the game today. Better effort, better focus against teams with losing records, and they have not learned that lesson yet. And tonight was another game. I mean, this was the team with the worst record in the NBA who was last in field goal percentage, and they shot 56% from the floor against the Nets. You know, that is the kind of performance that the Nets – just they want to stop having, yet they keep having. Tonight was another one of them. And it's one thing to acknowledge it, but then it's another thing to actually address the problem and execute things in a different manner that you've went around, uh, run, went about going uh, with things. And I think when you look at a team like the Detroit Pistons, it's similar to so many other teams that are below 500 or teams that on paper don't have the record or the cachet that the Nets have faced, yet you still need to understand that they are going to come out and bring you your best effort. And of all the numbers you can look at for Detroit that aren't pretty, the one area, they are second in the league and creating the most opponent turnovers. It's an area the Nets have struggled, but they took advantage. They capitalized. They were able to get early, easy baskets, whether it was points off turnovers, second chance points. Have you heard me say this before? Yeah. It's the areas where the Nets have issues with, and because of it, teams find a lot of confidence because they're getting those easy looks. You see the ball go through, and they're able to get into a fluid rhythm offensively. We saw that out of Detroit. The Nets pulled to within two there in the third quarter, but then it's just small miscues that again compound and lead the Nets to looking at another big deficit in the fourth quarter that they just couldn't come back from. And, and it did feel like the Nets were about to go on a run, right, after they beat the Clippers. And then the saga with KD happened, and it, it, it sort of threw off the equilibrium. But they just were not able to bring the effort they needed in these games against teams with losing records. And, and in the midst of this, Kyrie Irving also sprained his right index finger. And Sarah, it's going to be interesting to watch Kyrie. We, we know it, it's clearly something he can play through. But it did look like it may have affected his incredible shooting prowess tonight. Yeah, it, and that's going to be a factor, especially considering the fact that there is a game tomorrow night here at Barkley Center against Indiana. Um, it, and so much of the responsibility in many cases is put on Kyrie Irving, is put on James Harden in these games and in these circumstances with Kevin Durant out. However, this has got to be a top-to-bottom continued contributions from everyone. And that's why... It, should anyone be panicking? No, but it's about building the type of foundation that you need for what you want to do later. And we've seen enough examples of the lack of energy to start out with with games like this that at some point you've got to make sure that you have a sense of urgency to get it corrected. Well, we will see if the Nets bring it tomorrow night against Indiana. Going to be a great opportunity for the Nets to get a quality win before they head on the road for a big-time West Coast trip as we send it back to you guys in the studio.